And thanks everybody for being here. It's good to see you all. So over the summer, uh, JSX Graph got a lot of new 3D elements. And the for the workshop, I wanted to go through some of those new elements and show you what they can do and uh, just give you a chance to get a little practice with using them just so people that can, they can sort of start to soak into the JSX Graph community. And um, if you, I know there's probably some people here who haven't really used the 3D capabilities in JSX Graph at all. And in that case, you know, for you, the, these can just be like sort of a first introduction to some of JSX Graph's 3D elements. And there are certainly many more than the ones that I'm going to focus on. So this is mostly going to be uh, a sort of interactive workshop where you're going to be in breakout rooms talking to each other about the um, the new elements, learning how they work, and using them to either sort of create your own things or try to sort of do some challenges that I've made for you. So I am going to post into the, uh oh, uh, where's, the, where's the chat button? Can I get access to the chat? Oh, there it is. Okay, sorry. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put in chat a link to, so a link to the template files that we're going to be using to get started with these new elements. So uh, maybe that that is your cue, Karsten, to um, put okay. up the first of those template files, which would be sphere sampler.html. Share you now. You will see. Yeah. So if you go, yeah. So if you go to that link to my sort of discussion topic on the Moodle and download those HTML files that you see, or if you um, go scroll down and you click the links to the JS fiddles, then you can either open the first of those files, sphere sampler.html on your, in your web browser, like download on your computer and open in your web browser, or you can go to JS fiddle and just see it like an online version of it that you can run in your web browser. And um, I, you know, I, I recommend downloading. I think it'll make it easier to work with. But if that doesn't work for you, if the page won't display for you, then you can try JS Fiddle. And the idea is we're going to be using these templates both as a way to see a little bit what these new elements are like, and also as a starting point to start playing with them and creating our own things. So um, as we're going through these templates, um, please let me know in the chat or by unmuting yourself if you're having trouble downloading or viewing them so I can help, help fix that. So um, the new elements fall into sort of a couple of categories. And that's how I split up these template files. So the first category is spheres. So um, there's this new thing in JSX Graph called Sphere 3D. Uh, Kostin just opened the documentation page, which is always a great, you know, these documentation pages, when they exist, are always great resources for learning how to create and use um, elements. You can see this one even has like a little example. And so if, if we can go back to the, um, the template file. So the first, that first uh, board in the template file shows you various ways to create spheres, you know, from different kinds of data. And in particular, you'll notice that if you move around point D, the point where those two spheres intersect, you'll see that this shows you an example of two spheres that share some data. So they both both of the spheres are constructed to pass through that point D. And as a result, they both move in concert when you move it. Um, if you scroll down, you'll also see this little thing that shows you a bit about styling spheres. So if you look at the source code, you'll see the, the way that I set the styling attributes of those uh, spheres to get them to look that way. And if you look at the comments, so yeah, if you scroll down I, to the bottom, I guess, yeah, to the last script tag. Uh, ooh, looks like that's circles rather than spheres. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. 
<laughs> yeah, the wrong <laughs> yeah. Well, and ho hopefully people have downloaded by now, so um, they should be able to follow along okay. at home. Now I have Sphere. Sorry for that. <laughs> yeah, here it is. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So you'll see that there's lots of comments down here in the file. Um, you'll see there's a the comment at the the top of that lower script tag says styling demo, and so that's how you know um, sort of what you're looking for. And then, you know, this the comments are describing a little bit of what we're doing, and then you can look at the code and see, okay, um, whatever sphere this is describing, this is the settings that make it look like that, and you can use that as a starting point for again for creating your own things. Let's look at the next uh, the next file, which would be circle sampler.html. Um, so yeah, another type of new um, element is the circle 3D. And these things are created from a point, a normal vector, and a radius. So you give the center the normal vector of the circle and the radius. And you can do some interesting stuff. If you click on the circle 3D example in the examples folder, so there's that link up there. Uh, if you can, if you imitate that example, you'll see that this one actually is set up to create the normal vector from a pair of points. So it allows you to sort of take the normal vector of the circle, actually see it on the page, and drag it around to point the circle in different directions. And uh, that file, unfortunately, is not set up to run offline unless unless you've already downloaded the JSX graph source code. So uh, if people really want to see it running, I could make a, J a JS fiddle quickly while you're all working. So ask, ask me about that if you really want to see it, or you could try to reproduce it yourself. But in the the to keep it simple, the template file just has static circles pointed in different hardwired directions. All right, let's look at the next one, um, which is polygon sampler. So um, there are 3D polygons now in JSX Graph. They are pretty much what you would expect. They're modeled very closely on 2D polygons. So if, if you're used to 2D polygons, the, I don't think there will be any surprises here. Um, one thing to notice here, if you, uh, can you reload the page, Kostin? Yep. Yeah. So if you rotate that thing around and you let the points go past each other, you'll notice that the points, uh, if you, if you line up points so that they're right on top of each other, you'll see that the ones that are supposed to be in front always do actually show up in front and that uh, doesn't normally happen. That's not the default behavior of JSX Graph. And this is another new feature, which I'll mention at the end. So um, in this example, we're using another one of these new features, the new display feature, to help show you how this element works. And that's the, um, the depth order points attribute mentioned above. And yeah, if you look at different examples, this just goes through different ways of creating 3D polygons. And at the very bottom, uh, it shows some example of filling polygons. Uh, you can fill polygons. It's not always a good idea, because if you fill a non-planar polygon, it can end up looking very strange. So I recommend that you only fill polygons that are guaranteed to be planar. And uh, if you, yeah, so these are going to be fine because those are triangles. They're always planar. They always look nice. This one, if you play around with the vertices, like on your local copy, and then rotate things around a bit, um, you can quickly get into situations where things start looking very weird. Like try, for example, dragging that thing to like past the boundary of the other side. Now, yeah, so that. That's a bit not what you'd expect. So you could do some fun stuff with this, but you have to be <laughs> you have to be careful, or you have to be willing to get something that doesn't make a lot of sense. All right, let's look at the next next one. Um, that's intersection sampler. So 
JSX Graph has a really powerful intersection engine and uh, it works both in two dimensions and three dimensions. So we've, over the summer, we added some uh, intersections between the 3D elements. So this is showing a, a line that's the intersection of two planes. If you scroll down, uh, you'll see, um, since we have these new sphere elements, we can intersect them with a plane to get one of those new circle elements. And if you, yeah. And then if you scroll down to the next one, you can also take intersections between pairs of spheres and get, again, 3D circles. Those are one of the challenges has to do with these intersection elements. All right, let's uh, move to the next, next one. All right, so there's, you know, this, I, uh, how do you call it? Um, the sort of like engine that JSX graph has for sort of taking intersections and numerically solving equations or doing numerical search is also really good for creating these so-called gliders that are stuck to some geometric feature. And so we use that to create uh, new 3D gliders. I think this one existed already. So the line glider is like a really basic 3D glider. Um, it glides on a line segment. Um, and since an intersection line under the hood is just a line that's sort of created from in a certain way, it's created to be responsive to a pair of other elements, that immediately gives you intersection line gliders for free. Oops, there is a little bug there, so you'll notice yeah, if you <laughs> drag that glider too far. It, yeah, I noticed that when I was preparing the talk, we need to file a, an issue for that. And then we also have circle gliders. Um, these are, again, not, not fully, sort of fully polished. They have little quirks. So if you notice, you'll notice bugs or problems, like for example, getting stuck at the end of the circle. And, you know, it would be great to fix those in the future. And you all are definitely welcome to try contributing code to fix these issues. And also have curve gliders, um, which are kind of amazing. This really shows off the power of the um, numerical search uh, engine that's inside JSX Graph. So it's you can see that it's sort of snapping this point to a quite complicated curve. And then if you scroll down a little more, you can also do snapping or gliding now on parametric surfaces. And you can see again that the the surface can be quite complicated. In this in this case, you have like from many perspectives, like multiple sheets that the point is gliding on, and uh, it does. A, I think JSXGraph is doing a pretty good job of figuring out where it should be for sort of a natural motion. Perhaps in this case, it is important if I uh, drag this point uh, in the uh, x y direction. I just drag it. If I want it to drag in the set direction, I have to pr uh, press the shift button. Yes. Uh, when you... uh, the shift key. And there you can see there are those arrows. And now I can change the set direction. And without shift, I have the X, Y direction. So, yeah. so, so you can uh, uh, move it in 3D using the shift key on your keyboard. Yes, when you're playing with all of these examples, that is a really important to keep in mind. Thanks for mentioning that. Um, so yeah, you remember to use both shift drag and normal drag to move points in all of the directions that you can. All right, let's take a look at the next, next one. Um, so the final sort of set of things that we've added to JSX Graph is some new capabilities of the 3D view system itself. So here we're looking at these polygons like earlier in the default parallel perspective. But if you switch that switch that Custom is about to do, then it will go into a central projection. Or if you're an artist, you might just call this perspective, realistic perspective. And uh, that's something that didn't exist before, but it exists now and you can use it and even switch back and forth between different projections in real time. 
Then you also have this uh, depth ordering setting. So if you if it's turned on, like Kostin just did, then you'll see that when points go on top of each other, they're always displayed in the correct order. Like the one that's in front gets displayed in front. And if you turn it off, you'll see the old default behavior of JSX graph. Well, still the default behavior. It used to be the only behavior, which is that there was just no ordering. So if you, for example, yeah, put one point in front of another, so that one looks correct. But if you now turn this whole thing around 180 degrees, you'll see that, uh, yeah, if you, if you actually try to line up the same two points, yeah, oh, there you go, or those two points. Yeah, you'll see that they're out of order. So yeah. depth ordering fixes that issue. Um, we can't, just because of the way JSX graph works internally, it would be very difficult to get everything correctly ordered. Um, but making the points correctly ordered gets you, you know, at least it helps with the illusion of three dimensionality. So this is, yeah, this is one of the, the limitations of doing 3D stuff in JSX graph is that it's really kind of fundamentally a 2D uh, library. And, you know, as a, as a result, 3D things are always going to have these sort of limitations and quirks. And then finally, um, there is a new interaction system that you can turn on by setting attributes in your 3D views. And this is, so if you use the, if you're familiar with like the default interaction in JSX graph to change angles, this is changing the azimuth elevation and bank angle of the, uh, of the view axis by dragging back and forth. But if you switch to this new system that's been added over the summer, so if you switch to the so-called virtual trackball system in that menu there, and this is done by switching an attribute in the view 3D, if you now click and drag on the um, on the picture, yeah, you can see that you can change sort of everything at once. You can both rotate things in the plane of the screen and kind of roll them perpendicular to the screen uh, in kind of in a really, what I think is a really natural way. And this is the default interaction for a lot of 3D systems. And now it's available in JSX graph as well. All right. So now that we um, have sort of taken a look at everything that is new, I want to use the rest of the time in the session to just give you a chance to play with stuff, to look at these template files and create your own things or you know, just modify, tweak the templates a little bit and see what you can make. And if there's something that, if you're inspired to make something, you just, you're thinking, oh, I really want to make, you know, whatever, go ahead and do it. That's what this is for. It's just a time to sort of do free play. But if you can't really think of anything to make, I've prepared a couple of challenges to get you thinking. So if we go to the next tab, um, so this is, there's this challenges, um, tab in the, or the, you know, challenges thing in the uh, Moodle. Let me find the URL for that. Um, so I just put the URL for that thing in the chat as well. And Kustin is showing you some of the challenges. And here are the idea, you know, the the thing I the way I intended to use these which you don't have to do is that you would look at them um, maybe drag things around a little bit like Kostin if you drag around that point you'll see something interesting happen um, so you can look at these and don't look at the source code try to think about what is going on behind the scenes to create this picture and then see if you can create the same picture using some of those new elements. And there are some hints in the text at the top. Um, oh, there's also a little bit of extra documentation, just because, for example, I noticed that there's no documentation on the API reference, the API reference for how to create a plane, a 3D plane. So that should be fixed at some point. And then, yeah, we can. If you flip over, you can see this other challenge. So another challenge is to see if you can create that shape. So. 
I'm going to create some breakout rooms. They're organized by the different templates, basically. So the thing I was imagining is that people who, you know, when you, if you want to learn about a particular new element, or if you want to work on one of the given challenges, you can go into the corresponding breakout room, and then everybody who's in there will be talking about, you know, they'll be uh, talking about the same thing, and that means you can all collaborate more easily and learn from each other more easily. And I will go around to all of the breakout rooms to answer questions. So are there any questions before we go into those rooms?